It's well-organized atheists who have influenced greatly the halls of government and our educational system, like Reverend, uh, Reverend uh, Graham has said here. How have they done that? They've done it by litigating, yes. by taking towns and individuals, organizations, even churches to court. They've also done it just by a confusion of the very principle of se proper separation of church and state. Now here's a poser. Is it possible to have a class at an American public school that focuses on religion and not fear having someone be angered enough to bring the lawyers to bear in filing lawsuit because of a separation of church and state? The Oklahoma State Senate now has a bill before it that would allow schools to offer an elective course in the objective study of religion or Bible without fear of any legal repercussions. Let's find out more about this. Welcome to Midpoint, the Republican elected official from Oklahoma City who introduced Senate Bill 48. Senator Kyle Loveless joins us on the show. Senator, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Senator, let's first get the particulars out of the way. What exactly does your bill say that sets it apart from anything else that might have been put out there? Sure. Um, recently, uh, a school district in my district, uh, Mustang Public Schools, offered last year a bill uh, or offered a cl an elective class that would allow students to have an objective uh, literary examination of the impact of the Bible as an elective course. And interestingly, they didn't know what the feedback would be, and they had 20 spots and 200 students applied. Well, before they could even develop the curriculum, which they worked with originally with the uh, Hobby Lobby family, the Green family, which is here, here based in Oklahoma, they were developing the curriculum before they could even finish the curriculum. They were uh, they were threatened of lawsuits by the ACLU and the Americans United. So basically, they had to take they took a step back, and in the course of that, I decided, you know what? If the school district in Oklahoma wants to have an elective course that is not forced on students to have a study of the Bible, then they shouldn't have to worry about or spend spend taxpayer money defending themselves. Okay. So my legislation would give them legal protection and basically let them have that class. Let's ask this then from one side and one of the arguments here. No matter what the school wants and no matter whether or not it's an elective or not, what is it about this that does not violate the separation of church and state? Well, sure. Um, and, you know, the, the, the seminal case, the case that the Supreme Court in the past where uh, in 1963, where the Supreme Court literally took out, uh, you know, forced prayer in schools, 1963, the case, the, the Supreme Court said that as long as the course was, sub, you know, subjective, it was not a religious class in the sense of like a Sunday school class, but an objective one where you studied the history and the literature and the impact of the Bible, then that was protected under the First Amendment. And ever since then, courts have upheld that. So, you know, a proper separation of separation of church and state is what we should strive for. You know, we don't need the government telling people they have to go to church or what. But that has that's not what this what this bill does. All right, but what about those people who would say, "Wait a minute, now we're talking about objective, subjective. You're still talking about the teaching of religion, the teaching of the Bible. There will be people in each class who will believe in the Bible version. Those who will believe who may be Jews who may believe in their version." which differs some, especially in the New Testament. You'll have others from different religions here. So how then could you teach anything that would be truly, truly subjective slash objective, but would speak to everybody instead of just trying to teach a specific form of religion to students? And see, and that's the question. And then I think that school districts should have that ability to teach all the variety uh, of the text of the Bible in the sense of there are different interpretations and there are, but to me that having the, a, a class that's optional on the impact of it is the first step. And I think that's where we need to go. The question uh, on the curriculum is important. And I think that's why we need to, to flush that out. Uh, to make sure, and that's what the school districts in Oklahoma, Mustang School District, that, that started this is doing so that they'll be able to start the class in the fall. All right, now here's Burton Kane, a law professor at Temple University, who said, this sounds like a dodge. Distinctions make the field of religion in schools very foggy, but this one is foggier than any. You know that there's going to be people out there who will say immediately, all you're trying to do is you're trying to sneak religion into the public schools, and that's not where it belongs. You know that's going to happen. Absolutely, and I think that's a knee-jerk reaction, and I think that, that you have people that are just automatically trained 
uh, to any person of any faith say anything from the government, and almost automatically it's a separation of church and state violation. And I just don't think that that is the case. And I think here in Oklahoma, most people would agree with me. Why is it important, in your opinion, for students to learn a view of religion? I think that in today's society and in today's culture, I think having a proper study of the role of the Bible in, in context with our history, as well as its role in literature, as well as, you know, that to me is a proper history class that I think has been lacking. And I think as an optional class, I think that is a good thing to have. And I think most people, and especially the school district in my district that wanted it, you know, when 10 times the number of students you know, the, de the demand is there. So I think people really do want to, to know about our history, and I think that's where, if we don't know where we came from, we're going to make the mistakes that, that we did in the past. But when you talk about where we came from, you realize there are those who say, when you say that, you are then saying that we all came from where the Bible says we came from. And regardless, you know there are going to be people who say, we don't believe in that, so we don't think you should be pushing that into public schools. And, and, and that's my point. I don't know that disagreement necessarily means that I'm offending you. And I think that we can have civil discourse. And that's what part of the class giving, to me, I think the, the ultimate decision needs to be in local school boards, not the courtrooms. Because local school boards know what's best in their communities. And that's what my bill does, is give them the flexibility to do so. Have you had any complaints from parents in the district? Not many, as a matter of fact, not in any in the district that I, uh, that I represent. I've had people uh, in different parts of the country uh, call me a, you know, a bigot and a terrorist and, you know, that I'm trying to enforce my will on other people, and that's just simply not the case. I just think that school district, uh, school districts across Oklahoma, if they want to have the choice to offer a class, shouldn't be threatened by lawsuits. The, 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 um, the Mustang schools, before they, they were told by their insurance company, before they could insure or give them a quote on what that cost would have, they had to be sued first to determine what the cost is. That's ridiculous. And I just think that having that across in Oklahoma is a good thing to have. It is an interesting test case indeed. Uh, we'll wait and see what happens as we follow the course of this. Senator Kyle Loveless, thank you so much for sharing this with us. We'll keep in touch. Thanks so much. My pleasure. If you had $52 million and it was being sent to a country that is seemingly nothing to stop the flow of terrorism from their shores, what would you do? We'll ask that question. Dig into the current state of intelligence with Lisa Ruth right after the break.